Some some people were um, some people found the lab difficult to do in two days, and so we're just going to take our time. We're just going to kind of go slow with it, but um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so uh, I want to be very clear about what's going on here. We want to our end goal. Our end goal. I'm going to grab this. Okay, so our end goal is to be able to figure out what the concentration of a sample of vinegar is. We want to figure out what the concentration of vinegar is. Now, does anybody remember, remember what is the substance in vinegar that makes it vinegar? And then, oh, acetic acid, right? Yeah. So, we want to know the concentration of acetic acid inside this vinegar. That's our end goal. That's what we want to do. Now, how do we do that? How can we get the concentration of a liquid? Wim? The titrant inside the burette, right, Idris? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in order to do that, we need, in order to do that, oh man, we need to have a burette filled with some sort of a titrant. And what are all the things that we need to know? about that burette, about that titrant. So you need to know the volume and you need to know the concentration in order to get the volume of this. What else do you need to know? You need the volume of this. And then we're looking for concentration, right? <clears throat> okay, here's the problem. Is that, uh, shoot, I already took note, whatever, that's fine. Um, I've got, I have the bottle of sodium hydroxide that we're going to be using in our burette. I have that bottle. We know, we are pretty darn sure that the concentration of that sodium hydroxide is around 0 0.150 moles per liter. At least I think it is. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be. Yes. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyways, so we, our concentration is going to be about, about this probably. I'm pretty sure the last time we did it, that's what it was about. So this concentration, we're not totally sure of. We're not totally 100% accurate on that. So if we don't have an accurate value for our concentration here, can we get an accurate value for the concentration here? No, we can't. Wim. That's where the KHB is going to come in. Our goal today is to make a solution, is to make a solution of our potassium hydrogen phthalate. Because again, if we know the concentration of this and we know the volume of this, then we can use, this is what we call a primary standard. We can use our primary standard to figure out what the concentration of that is. Then once we figured out what the concentration of that is, then we can figure out what the concentration of that is. It's a little bit annoying, but it's totally necessary. We have to do it, right? Because we don't know exactly what this concentration of sodium hydroxide is. So that's our goal for today. Really, we really only have one thing to do. Make a solution of a very specific concentration of KHP. 
So let's look at our lab. Let's look at the very top of our lab, the very first thing that's mentioned there. It says, calculate the mass of KHP. Remember, is KHP made up of potassium, hydrogen, and phosphorus? No. No, it's, it's made up of potassium, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Short term. Yeah. So that's, that's just the, sh the shorthand. That's just the nickname that we give it, right? KHP is potassium, hydrogen, and phthalate. I want you, I'm going to give you about two minutes. I want you to calculate the mass of KHP that would be required to make 100 milliliters of 0 0.150 mole per liter solution. So go ahead and do that. And I'm going to walk around. Remember, has there been a reaction yet? No, we're just, we're just trying to figure out how much do we need. That's it. That's all we got to do. So go ahead and try and figure that out. Does anybody need a calculator or a data booklet?
Okay, you should have gotten around three grams, right? Okay, all right, good. So, I want to be very clear about this. Sorry, I, I should have said this uh, from the very beginning. I, I'm not going to get a lab report from you. If you want, if you want to, if you want me to check over your lab information or whatever, that's totally fine. But I'm not going to get you to submit a lab report. What we are going to do is we're going to have a quiz solely based off of your lab information. Not your lab information, but lab information in general. So what I need you to be able to do is I need you to be able to standardize sodium hydroxide. So what that means is average volume calculation for three consistent trials, right? When we do a titration, there's usually four trials and one of them we'll get rid of, right? And then solution stoichiometry, and then same thing for vinegar, we have to be able to do that. Okay, so I just I just want you to be I just want you to understand that. That's that's the expectation. You'll have to be able to do all that stuff. Okay. So for right now, for number one, all we want to do is we want to be able to um, make our standard solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure out our however many grams of KHP, and we're going to try and dissolve it in some water, some distilled water. And then you're going to transfer, right? Do you remember our, our um, quantitative transferring techniques where you dissolve something in a beaker, and then you pour it through a funnel into the volumetric flask? Oh, the one that took like an hour? An hour? I sure hope it doesn't take you an hour. This is one of the reasons why we split this up into three days right now, is because, again, doing this should take you max 10 minutes in the lab. Maximum. Like, if you know what you're doing, and if you go out there and you just do it, you, just don't, you don't have to think about it, it should take you maximum 10 minutes. Because what do you have to do? You have to weigh out three grams-ish right? Three grams of the KHP. And then you got to dissolve it in some water. And then you got to transfer that to a volumetric flask. And what do you do? After you pour the solution into the volumetric flask, then what do you got to do? You got to rinse out your beaker, right? You want to quantitatively transfer all, every single last molecule of the KHP into your volumetric flask. And then, what do you want to do? You want so you've got a little bit of water in here with some KHP in it. Then what do you got to do? Fill it up to the line. But how? Like, if I've got if if I, if this is is that good? No. No. Is that good? No. Is that good? No. What happens if you do that? You literally have to start all over again, right? Make sure you do not do that. You want to stop so that the meniscus is just touching the top of the line. That's the idea, right? You want to make sure that it's, it's just touching the top of the line. Um, okay, so you're going to add with an eyedropper. You're going to add distilled water and you're going to get down on your knees, right, and you're gonna have a good perspective. You wanna make sure you're at eye level when you're looking at the meniscus. So you're gonna add it drop by drop so that the meniscus is just touching the top of the line. And then, if you want, you can call me over and I can check it out. And I'm not gonna dock you marks if you're off or whatever, and that's totally fine. But you have to call me over before doing what? Before dumping it. Nope. 
it. You have to call me over before inverting it, right? So you're gonna put a cap on here, and then you're gonna do this. How many times are you gonna invert it? Ten times. You're gonna invert it ten times, and that will mix it. But the problem is, as soon as you invert it one time, and then you let it go back, your level's gonna be below the meniscus. Why? Why is your level gonna be below the meniscus? Because Do you see all the water in here that's above the line of the meniscus? That's just coating the walls of the, yeah. And it's, it's gonna be coating the cap as well, right? So the water that used to be at the meniscus is now spread out up here, so then now it looks like it's below. Don't go back and add more water, right? You've already added enough water. You, it will, once you shake it, it'll be below the line, and that's fine. As long as it was at the line before you shook it. Yeah. Um, this is some stuff that you need for tomorrow. Like, we're not going to do the burette clamp and the support stand and the phenyl phalene and everything like that. Can we write down the list of all the stuff you need today? Sure. Yeah, okay. You need... Ah. It's not going to work. Okay, can I erase this then? Yes. Yeah. All the stuff that you need for today, the very first thing you need, you need a volumetric flask. And we only have 100 milliliter volumetric flasks, so whatever, that's fine. Just I might as well specify it. You need a 50 milliliter beaker. The 50 milliliter beaker is for you weighing out your sample and dissolving it in water. You obviously need distilled water and a like a, a rinse bottle, right? So let's just write that down. A rinse bottle with distilled water. Then you need an eyedropper. For adding, for adding drop by drop from the distilled water. Then you need a cap. You need a cap for your ball for the ball flask. And the last thing you need, I think, a funnel and maybe a stir stick. Well, not maybe, but. A stirring rod, a stirring rod, stir stick, whatever. Uh, and then you need tape, you've got to label it, okay? So what's going to happen is you're going to have your solution, and you're going to keep your solution on the counter up at the front overnight. But it's got to be labeled with your names on them, right? Your group's names on them. Now, what we're going to do tomorrow is we're gonna take this solution and we're gonna use it to standardize our sodium hydroxide. So once we know our concentration of sodium hydroxide, then on the third day we can titrate our vinegar. Is that okay? What I wanna do is I, I'm hoping that everybody can get this done in like, I, I know I said max 10 minutes, but it's, that's not realistic for a lot of our groups because a lot of us a lot of us like to hesitate. A lot of us like to slowly go through the procedure, and that's fine, okay? But if you were totally prepared and knew exactly what you were doing in max 10 minutes, we should be done in 20, 25 minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here, and I'm going to show you how to set up for your titration for tomorrow. Is that okay? And make that go as quick as possible as we can tomorrow. Good? Yeah. Good. Okay, let's try that. We're at the second lab then. I would just do it by yourself if you're comfortable with it. Yeah.